Hello and welcome to the show. This is Everything Under the Sun. My name is Ty. I hope all of you are taking care of yourselves the best way you know how to. I spoke about last week about my back issues, so thank you for those of you that have sent in suggestions and you know a lot of them were very helpful. But actually after that recording, after I did the recording, I actually had a little accident that just consumed all of my pain and made me distracted from the pain in my back. I was doing some work with a power saw and I mean as you can probably guess, I cut my fingers with the power saw, and it was a uh, it was not the the best sight to see. There was blood just everywhere, but uh, you know I still have my fingers, and that's you know the best thing I could ask for. And you know it, it's healing well, so you know I, I can't have any complaints there. But you know it did it did really help me to not pay attention to my back pain. But as it's starting to heal more, I'm starting to notice my back pain a little bit more. So keep those suggestions coming. I actually may just try some of the suggestions that that were sent in, but. Um, yeah, so, so that was just like an eventful situation that made this week, uh, I guess, a little more challenging. You know, you you need your fingers for a lot of things, and you don't really realize until you, you know, don't have them that you uh, that you really need them. So I guess I am fortunate to, you know, just be in a healing process and, and thankful to still have them because it, it has made me think, you know, what if I did actually lose my finger? I was in the hospital and actually just like bleeding out, you know, just like waiting to uh have you know the stitches put in waiting for you know them to give me the numbing injections in my finger and i'm sitting there in pain and for some reason i guess like every doctor and nurse in the hospital had heard it was a very small hospital so i I really do imagine it was every doctor and nurse in the hospital had heard that i had come in and had an injury to my finger from a power saw so all of them came by one by one to explain the most gruesome stories that they've had of incidences with power saws like people losing their fingers the doctor that was working on my finger told me he had to tell a patient to go back and get his finger so uh you know i definitely do feel lucky to you know be somewhat okay and be healing and be able to make light of the situation and you know still be able to practice guitar if i need to so very thankful for that and just that thankfulness makes me a little more at ease with the situation you know a lot of people are wondering like why I'm so lighthearted about the situation but it's really because you know I I think about all the other ways in which it could have turned out a lot worse so you know I'm thankful and you know that's I think that's the best thing for my mental health personally and I think just as we think about this episode mental health I think it's really just a lot of those things that we do for ourselves that help us to stay okay but it's the recognition of what are those things that that help us to be okay I have spoken to a lot of friends recently and it's been this interesting thing and I'm not sure if this has been the same with you but um you know it's been a pretty tough year. It's been a very tough year but I've noticed a lot of friends and conversations with friends that they're coming out of the situation where it was a, they they recognized that it was a very difficult year and that there were a lot of challenges that they would never want to go through again but if they had to go through them again then they would just because it it shaped them it helped them to grow and helped them to realize not only that they were in a not good place or not in a place that they wanted to be but they yeah, they, they were in a place that they didn't want to be. And I think that's the biggest recognition is when we realize that we're not where we want to be because we can, we can feel, you know, like we're, we have our back against the wall. We can feel as though we are alone in, in a situation. And maybe we are in some, in some ways, but it's the recognition and the realization that we are in a place that we don't want to be because we can be in those situations. We can be in those dark places, but not really realize that, or not really, you know, have a full commitment within ourselves to remove ourselves from that, you know, because maybe we don't really fully understand what that feeling is. So it's it's really understanding that you're dealing with something and that you're dealing with things and that, that those things have to be identified before you can really, you know, do something with it, as I've spoken about before. And, and once you do recognize what you can do with it, you can put it aside and you can value it for what it has brought you, the strength that it has given you, and, and the perspective that you do have now that you've gone through that experience. So it's really amazing speaking to friends and, and, and seeing that, you know, like that, those are the type of the type of insights that are coming out of this very difficult year that all of us have experienced cumulatively and on different levels. So uh, it, it's, it's very amazing to hear that. And I hope the same for all of you. And if this is something that you're recognizing, I'm, I'm very happy and, and, 
supportive of everything that you're doing in your journey and and i hope that you continue to do that and i will continue to do that in myself and you know obviously hope that for all of my loved ones so we're going to get into this topic because obviously it's a it's a really amazing topic that has a lot to offer because it involves all of us and everything that we do so here's the box here that's going to be for the topic for next week which is uh again full of topics that you send in so send those to everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com and you know if you are listening to this podcast and specifically this episode on mental health do yourself a favor and, and maybe your friends a favor and really just you know suggest this podcast to a friend and it doesn't necessarily have to be uh for every episode maybe just this episode or maybe even just speak to your friends about mental health because it's something that's so important and this episode has brought me a lot of anxiety or like stress around it but not because of you know just doing an episode it's because it's a very important episode and it it's kind of the basis of what this podcast is about and i want to do it justice in describing just what mental health is and how how impactful it is for all of us so share it with friends even if it's not this podcast just a conversation that that just shows that it's okay to start having these these conversations it's okay to start talking about these things and okay to it's okay to feel things and and to recognize those things and to address those things when you do recognize them so yeah uh this is the box of topics and uh we're gonna figure out what's that, what's going on for next week so send those topics to everything that some podcast at gmail.com or thoughts or anything else that you you want to send in, send in to the show the next topic for next week is going to be exercise and you know i think it's kind of interesting that we're talking about mental health because mental health is akin to our physical health and you know they're both very much influential so exercise is not something that i'm going to try to speak about in terms of you know yeah we should exercise every single day and all sort of stuff it's not anything like that and i think that there's a lot more to exercise than just you know going to the gym or trying to get super ripped or anything like that it's you know really just movement and motion and you know motion is medicine movement is medicine and you know i think i want to focus on that perspective because i know for me personally i haven't worked out since september and like officially like really worked out since september and it's been you know i i'm I'm starting to notice it and not necessarily in just like weight gain or weight changes but also just in the way my body feels you know like my the way my joints feel the way my muscles are tight and stuff like that so you know it could be something that's really just beneficial and just maintaining just our body and the health of it and being able to live the life that we want to live by being mobile and able to do that so I don't know where I'm going to go with it but it's going to be you know less on just like obviously that stringent idea of exercise and more on something that's uh, a little more just inclusive i suppose to everyone in in our lives as humans so anywhere uh, anyway i feel like i was kind of trailing off there but today we're going to speak about mental health because this is something that is truly it, it impacts all of us and a problem with mental health as it stands today is that or just like the conversation around it is that there are a lot of misconceptions around it there's a lot of misconceptions around what mental health is specifically. A lot of people believe that it's just individuals that are dealing with severe depression or severe anxiety or maybe schizophrenia and, and or like these things that, you know, I guess are more uh, substantially debilitating that people have to take medications and things to try to get through the day to live the best life that they can. And of course, that is a part of mental health, but our mental health is everything. You know, it, it's it's affected by every single thing that we do. You know, our fears, our losses, our failures, our our worries, our joys, the times that we feel excited, the times that we feel inspired, all these moments are impacting our our mental health. Every single situation, you know, you're going down the street and you smile at someone and they don't smile back. That's impacting your mental health. And of course, these things can be small, but they they build up and and they add into different categories in, in our minds and they create, you know, they can create a tidal wave of emotions or create a situation where we are impacted a lot more than just that small situation and if we don't pay attention to it if we don't stay mindful of where we are at like in our day-to-day lives 
it can start to consume us. It can start to overwhelm us. And we can get to a place where we just feel confused. We just feel lost within ourselves and not really sure what's going on because we haven't paid attention to ourselves. We haven't paid attention to those signs that have popped up that we kind of just pushed aside because we didn't want to deal with it. And that's something that's also just so big with this idea of mental health is that we speak about mental health and with these misconceptions and these ideas of just it not being a good thing or it being something that's like so negative a lot of people are fearful of even attending to those mental things because they feel like they have to be okay and if they're not okay then they then they're going to be labeled as something else they don't want to speak to people about the issues that they're going through because they don't want to seem weak or not okay and there's this strange erroneous idea of just being okay all the time (laughs) there's there's no way that we are all going to be okay constantly like that's not just something that's not a reality in in life you know and and you know i i guess like in some domains i I don't i don't want to go too far into it but you know i guess like you know maybe for some people that is something that's possible like maybe you're completely zen and you're meditating all the time and you're just really just okay all the time but for most people most people are dealing with things in our day-to-day lives that are impactful that are going to change the way that we think change the way that we feel change the way that we move in our lives and and it becomes bad because when these things start to influence the way that we move in our lives nine times out of ten they they limit the things that we do they limit the 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 ways that we move the ways that we express ourselves the way that we feel within ourselves so it's important to recognize when we're being affected by different things and to realize that it's okay to not be okay and i love when when people you know post things about this or or speak about this or speak about the things that are impacting them in their lives because that conversation just brings more normalcy and when i say everyone is impacted by this i mean like everyone men women people of color people of different cultures and nationalities people both young and old and something that's so sad is that we have a population of young people that are in this world that you know it's it's ever changing it's changing so fast and with that change there's also no shift in the recognition of an attention to like our mental needs our, our 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 mental health and it's something that I think is something so important, especially being now in an age where there's so much information, there's so much out there that's impacting our mental health more than it has like in, in, in previous decades, because in those times, like we're still being consumed by many of those, those issues and those things that are being dealt with. But now it's kind of being expanded to the different domains because the world is getting smaller. Technology is allowing people to communicate and and see different things and have access to different information and different people. And, with this it's it's creating this shift in our youth that's something that's actually very troubling suicide is the number one source of death for youth in all countries including those that are in impoverished areas like impoverished countries like developing countries like suicide is still the number one cause of death for youth in in the entire world and this is something that's very alarming and and i don't know why this isn't something that we aren't paying more attention to and it's because of these misconceptions, it's, it's because of these ideas about mental health that, that, you know, it's something negative. We have to be okay to go through the day. We have to be okay to function through society. And this idea of just being okay all the time, it's, it's negating the idea and the fact that we feel things and that we are experiencing different things in our lives and that it's not only important to attend to them, it's necessary to attend to them. Because there are times when we can be so crippled mentally that we can't move physically that we can't mentally or physically be attentive to you know our children our jobs our our obligations in our day-to-day lives so we can't even live a quality of life that is you know even worth called living because of our mental state it's it's critical and it's so interesting why we seem to have this idea of just giving more priority to physical illness rather than our mental illness and i mean maybe it's just because of the the fact that it can be seen but you know there's something that was said in a a ted talk that i was listening to and i'm going to reference this in a little bit but he said 
there are so many times where people will say, you know, like someone's dealing with something like a tough situation, and they'll say, oh, you know, don't think about it, you know, it's all in your head. But if someone has a broken leg, you're not going to tell them, oh, just walk it off, it's all in your leg. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's this kind of crazy idea where it's like, we can be in so much pain mentally, but it's not even something that's, that's being considered or being acknowledged. And it's not going to have that effect or have that significance until we start making it significant. So it's up to us to start, start having these conversations and start sharing ourselves, you know, and, and of course, you know, don't, you know, go up to random strangers and start just divulging all the things that, that you're dealing with or whatever that may be. But find a close friend, find, find someone that you know is dealing with something. You know, there are so many times that I see friends in conversations where it's like someone's dealing with something tough. And they're telling it to a friend who's also dealing with something tough. And that friend's like, yeah, I get what you mean. And then it's like, let's think about something else, you know, and or like just try to shift it up. And it's like even being in that situation where there's someone that can be there with you, that can talk this out with you and 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 hold that space for you. It's still kind of pushed aside because, you know, we're not supposed to be not OK. And I, I think that that's just so false. Share that with your friends. Have those conversations with those people you care about. Those people that you know won't judge you for speaking will hold that space for you. And if you don't have that person in your life, you know, find that person. Create that person in your life. You know, sometimes it's starting that awkward conversation, you know, maybe saying like, hey, how are you feeling today? And maybe your friend's like, what, what are you talking about? Like, you've never asked me something like that before. Start those awkward conversations. Start start those things because they're going to start becoming more normal. They're awkward now because we're not having them enough. And it's important that we have them because it's important for our health. There are so many things that impact our mental health, as I've said before. And the thing that's making it worse is the stigma around it. It's it's the shame that's around mental health. And the the, the idea of just if you are dealing with something, then then, you know, like there's something wrong with you. And, and that's something that's just completely false because we're all dealing with something. We're all dealing with things. We're dealing with life. And life comes in different forms and, and it impacts us in different ways. I spoke about labels in the last episode, this idea of, you know, creating labels with, with individuals and how that can be something that can blind us from seeing the fact that they are human. You know, and I think that when we think about mental health as well, a lot of times we don't want to be labeled, you know, maybe uh, as a depressed person or someone that's has anxiety or schizophrenia or, you know, um, bipolar or whatever it may be. But again, like these are labels, these are these are labels. And of course, it's it's good sometimes to be able to identify something that is going on within yourself, because nothing can be more confusing than feeling a lot of things and being being just lost as to what that is and the the brightening at within that entire situation can be just hearing the words of someone else explain what you're feeling there's this idea of universality where you you feel connected because you don't feel like you're you're the only one experiencing this you know like you you feel as though like okay yes now i understand it so uh, a name can be something that's beneficial for some to really identify and and really put something tangible towards this this mental thing that's so ambiguous but it becomes a label i think and and i use label like where it's like a a negative thing it becomes a label when individuals only see that rather than the fact that this is a human that's dealing with something that's going through something and these labels are something that is making this situation a lot worse. This idea, this conversation about mental health a lot worse because people can say, yes, this is an important conversation, but they won't have it if they're dealing with something themselves. They won't want to express it if they're dealing with something themselves. And this is something that, I mean, it's just it's just a fact. It's something that, that, that just happens. And although I'm a mental health advocate, I will be there for you if you are dealing with things. I'll, I'll acknowledge my own feelings within you know myself if I if I understand them or if I can, you know, kind of recognize what they are, but I won't always share them with other people, you know, for my own personal reasons. But I went through a very, you know, very extreme depressive state where I was like 
very, very depressed, you know, and it wasn't something that I even identified as being depression until, you know, like I really started thinking about it. I remember being in a bar with my friend and my friend, you know, asked me, you know, is everything all right? Because obviously like there was just something off about my energy. My friend asked, is everything all right? And I say, I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I just feel really weird and it's starting to feel weird in my body. And it was something I couldn't describe. It was like a mental, like mental feeling just like of just something not being right. And it hadn't been right for a while. And it started to affect my body. I started to feel it in my body. It was like, you know, I just, it was just, it was, it was something that, you know, started influencing me in that way. And that's when I started noticing it. That's when I started to realize that this is something that is an emotional thing. This is something that I'm dealing with. Like this is a mental thing that I'm, I'm working through. And even in that recognition, it didn't get me out of it. You know, this is like a year and a half going through it. And, and I didn't tell really anyone, you know, I speak to family. I'd be there for friends in the same way I had been previously. But in certain situations, you might catch me just randomly starting to cry. I'd be laughing and then like randomly tears start falling on my eyes. You know, it, it's like there are so many things that we deal with. And, you know, it could be that person that's always there for you. You know, and unfortunately, like I, I do, I am in a better place. And it was through the recognition of what I was dealing with and the identification that I didn't want to be there anymore. And of course, it's not that easy. And it wasn't easy, you know, and, and of course, I still have to check in with myself to make sure that I'm OK, to make sure that like, you know, things are good because I slipped and that slip was me going through almost like an entire year and a half, two years, maybe even of, you know, not being OK and not realizing it until it got to that critical point. And that's something that is is so important and in, in why we have to attend to ourselves and really maintain what we're feeling and and try to you know just understand ourselves a lot more because that's really what it is it's understanding ourselves more our reactions to things our our feelings towards certain situations that that emerge in our lives and how we want to feel when we come out of it but we can't do anything with it and i've said this time and time again we can't do anything with it until we identify it until we really attend to it and 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 dust it off and clean it off and see what it is and and move it aside and, and decide what we want to do with it. Because only then do we have that power to actually make the change that we want to see. So as we start moving forward in these conversations, we can't be silent. No more silence can be had. We can no longer keep this something that's in the shadows because it's going to impact us even more and more. It's almost as if physically, you know, by, by not having these conversations, we're doing the same thing we're doing mentally where we're pushing aside these things that we're dealing with. We're stuffing them down until they erupt into something that's so big. You know, and I I don't want to attribute, you know, you know, school shootings and and these really heinous things that like that are happening in first world nations, you know, that 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 are happening with with youth in, in these in these places where it's like, what's what's happening? What is the cause? It's mental health. And it's the lack of the attention to it. And of course, maybe there, there, there are other factors. Maybe it's there, there's rage or whatever it is, but actually, you know, that's all mental health, anger, sadness, you know, distress, confusion. It's all mental health. We need to pay attention to it because these things aren't going to just stop. If we stop talking about it, they're going to actually just keep happening. No more silence. Also allowing ourselves to speak about these things. That's that that's something that's so big. And it can be hard, you know? And again, I know this. Like I spoke about in that story, you know, like again, I went through that that moment in my life and it wasn't until I came out of it or I started, you know, feeling better. You know, I started feeling, you know, more like myself that I started speaking about it more. But it wasn't until I was okay. And that's not that's not the best way to go about it. And of course you don't have to you don't have to share with the world the things that you're feeling. If you want to work on that you know in in your way then find your way of working on it because that's a big part of mental health too it's it's understanding yourself and the things that make you feel good when you're not feeling okay the things that make you feel uneasy and that you you know are are realizing that you want to feel a different way 
you know, it, it's all about like how you want to attend to it. So you don't have to go and speak about it. But if you feel like you want to speak to someone about it, then find a friend, find a therapist, find find someone that you that you want to have that conversation with and, and make it something that's OK. There's this another TED talk called um, The Power of Vulnerability by Brene Brown. I think I may, may have mentioned this before in an earlier episode, but essentially she's speaking about this this idea of, you know, allowing yourself to be back in that vulnerable position you know there are things that cause us pain or sadness and we shudder away from it we don't even want to look back at it because it, it, it can it can be something that causes us more pain but just in looking away from it and not attending to it it's blocking us off it's 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 removing a piece of life from us and how can we have a abundant quality of life if we're constantly being blocked off by these things that are in our lives and it can be hard, and that's where the vulnerability part comes in. But opening yourself to these vulnerable situations can help you to realize that not every situation that you put yourself in, not every risk that you put yourself into is going to turn out bad. You know, maybe there are going to be a few of them that turn out bad, but allowing yourself to go back into that position keeps that wall from being built up. Something I wanted to make sure I didn't do when I cut my finger after I cut my finger was to be afraid of using a power saw again because that can mess people up. It's a traumatic situation. And of course, like the next day, you know, I was like, I'm going to get right back to it the next day. I was in a lot of pain the next day because I didn't pick up my medication. But even after I picked up the medicine that day, I still, I was like, you know, maybe I'll just do some measurements today. There was part of me that was just like, you know, like uneasy about the situation. But the next day I went back to it. Like after that day, I went back to it and I, I did only a few cuts. It wasn't anything serious, but it was something that made me realize that okay this situation isn't always going to be bad and that's something that can be so big for our mental health is just to expose ourselves back to that situation that scares us that situation that maybe is opening up that tender spot within our minds and within you know ourselves and really just pressing on it and seeing like oh is this going to be okay but it's like it, it's it's that opening ourselves to vulnerability that allows that mental resilience to to happen you know and as we build more resistance, as we start realizing the the good things that we have in our lives, the things that we value, the things that bring us joy and happiness, and also the things that maybe aren't so good, the things that the things that make us feel down, the things that make us feel anxious, we can take both of those things and we can balance them out by using one for the other. You know, if we're if we're feeling down, if we're feeling anxious, we can we can go to that thing that brings us joy and happiness and maybe just for a, a few seconds maybe a minute or two we can just go towards that listen to your favorite song maybe write some things down or, or draw or just you know escape and go on a hike or something you know like something that can allow you to use your own tools to be okay and i think i've spoken about this again before where you know like we are collecting these tools in our toolbox where we we collect these things that we know are good for us these things that make us feel good and in those times that we need extra attention we we want to help to heal ourselves we can bring these things in we can use these tools that we have in our toolbox to help us be okay i remember a few years ago when my dog had passed away i was i was with a friend i was hanging out with a friend of mine and had to excuse myself when i got the phone call from my mom and i got off the phone and i went outside and I sat on the stairs. It was like an apartment that I was in. And I was, of course, crying. And as I lift my head up, it's a beautiful warm day in the summer. And, you know, the sun is shining. I think I hear like laughter in the background. It was really just it, really just interesting. The, the, this flock of birds like majestically starts like swooping through like the neighborhood and the trees were like glistening and breathing in this way. And I, I was just like looking at life happen. And I realized in that situation that even though my perspective of the world was so dark and bleak and, and sad, life was still happening. There was still beauty happening. You know, there's still love happening. And that is one thing that, that helps me to be okay when I'm in those situations. When I'm in a dark situation, I look around me and I see... But the thing, the pain that I'm feeling isn't going to be forever. And the reason I know that is because I see that even though I'm in pain, that there's still beauty happening around me. That beauty still exists, even though 
in my eyes, all I'm seeing is pain. And of course, I mean, that's like, it's, it's super heady, I guess, to really think about and like really try to put into like a mental perspective. But that's something I know works for me. That's in my toolbox. And that's something that I use. But it's, it's something that I've had to learn that I use, you know. It, it was situations where I was just down and found myself walking and no longer being down because I was, you know, immersed in nature. You know, then I started putting two together and, and realizing, oh, this is what helps me to be okay in these situations. Now I can use that as a tool. Understanding yourself better. Understand yourself better because that will help you to provide this mental first aid that you need. Another amazing TED Talk, and this is a quote from the TED Talk that he said, he said, you can't treat a psychological wound if you don't know you're injured. And if we don't attend to ourselves, we don't know ourselves well enough to know that we're not okay, then we can't attend to that wound. We can't, we can't know that we're injured and that we need these tools in our toolbox to help mend that wound. He speaks about emotional first aid, this idea of just being able to just really attend to ourselves and how we haven't really been taught this. And this, this uh, TED Talk is How to Practice Emotional First Aid by Guy Winch. And amazing, amazing TED Talk. He has a certain way that he speaks that's very engaging and it's it's very I, I guess soothing to listen to for for me personally but he speaks about a lot of things and I smiled I also felt a lot in that situation because he spoke about things that that's it's it's very true you know like things that we the way that we live our lives it's it's living with our attention towards things that you know are only kind of to you know like kind of extras Everything is kind of extras when it comes to our mental health because, you know, if we come to a place where we're in this dark, dark space, the rest of the world can be blind to us, you know, like, or we can be blind to the rest of the world. We can shut ourselves off and then, then what use is all that other stuff? Like, what what utility does that provide in my life now because I'm in this place where none of that stuff is relevant to me? All that's too much for me to even deal with. So I'm going to just stay here. We live in a society where we focus on all these external things when the true value is our internal world and how we need to have more conversations about how to attend to that, how to utilize this emotional first aid. He calls it emotional hygiene, you know, and, and something that we, we should also do just like we brush our teeth and, you know, wash our face and wash our body. You know, it's, it's something that we do daily. It's something that we do to maintain a health we have to maintain our mental health by attending to it. Check in with yourself. This morning I woke up and most mornings I wake up and I listen to soothing music or music that kind of gets me kind of in a mood that I want to be in. And sometimes it's like soft, mellow music. Sometimes it's like pumped up music because I wake up in a good vibe. But, you know, I've, I've spoken about how music just helps me also. It's one of my other tools in my toolbox. So I wake up and maybe I have a, a stressful day. Maybe I have a, a day full of a lot of things going on. I start my day with, with some music that's calming and soothing because that's how I want to take part in my day. That's how I want that day to interact with me. That's how I want my day to start off. And the way that we start off our day can be so much. And I don't want to get like super preachy and, you know, just trying to say things that may or may not help in different situations. But these, again, this is just me understanding myself and understanding what tools work for me. So find out how to tend to yourself. Find out what's in your toolbox, what's in your first aid kit, and and use those things to help to create this routine, this hygiene routine of just attending to yourself and being with yourself and just understanding yourself a lot more because when you understand yourself a lot more again you can do a lot more with you know just where you want to be in life another amazing idea was from a ted talk that i think is just really amazing and i think that it kind of expands to something a lot more community-based more individualistic than what he was speaking about but i think he was also speaking about it in this perspective as well but the idea is called task shifting and it's a TED Talk that was done by Vikram Patel. And the TED Talk is called Mental Health for All by Involving All. And essentially, he speaks about this idea of in communities where there aren't a lot of healthcare providers, mental health care workers, they specialize 
individuals within the community to do these certain things. So they work with midwives to help them uh, teach CBD or something like that. I forgot what the reference was in the talk itself, but helping, you know, like essentially train individuals that are in these different settings to work in these different domains to help individuals on the ground, like in, in their communities when there aren't enough healthcare workers to provide that as a nation. And I think that idea can be expanded a lot further than just kind of training individuals to do these specialized things like CBD or, you know, whatever it may be, but also just allowing more conversations to be had about just good ways to listen, good ways to be attentive towards each other and the people that are around us. Because, I mean, before there were therapists and people with specialized training and things, there were just communities of people, like close-knit tribes of people that worked together, that helped raise and rear children together. Like, they were with one another and helped each other out, you know, spoke to each other, listened to each other. And that's something that we can still do, but we're, we're moving more distant as a society, even though technology is bringing us closer in communication we're moving more distance and and just like that idea of just human connection so having more conversations about you know how to have these conversations with people how to listen better how to be attentive with friends and family members that are dealing with tough things you know these are these are skills that aren't necessarily things that we have to be trained in but just things that we have to you know just practice and and learn how to do and we can help so much the people around us and ourselves by doing these things, by just listening and being there and have these conversations and speaking about these things, we'll be happier, we'll be healthier. We'll be more open to realizing that it's okay to be dealing with something. And not only that we're dealing with something, that, but that we have a community around us that is willing and able to attend to us in that way. And that's, I mean, I feel like that's the ultimate goal is to, to really try to create an environment where no matter what we're dealing with, we can have someone that we're going to and have a conversation with. We can have someone that's there to sit with us. We can have someone that's there to provide support in some way, if, if, if possible. And of course, that's something that's idealistic, but I also feel like it's realistic. You know, I feel like it's something that's very real, but not until we start addressing it. So this was... I mean, I, I think that there's just so much to mental health and I, I really wanted to try to get the bigger idea of mental health without going to specifics of different things that people struggle with involving mental health. But, you know, I, I feel like those will probably be topics of themselves. But, you know, I, I guess I just wanted to get to this idea of how just important this is. You know, like this is something that involves all of us. And just because of that, I think that it's a conversation that you should be having, you know. Uh, and I hate to say shoulds and shouldn'ts, but... Um, you know, I feel like it's, it's a conversation that you could definitely be having with yourself that may provide a lot more than you, than you may expect. So, so yeah, that's all I got for this one. If you're, you know, if you know people that are dealing with things that they're struggling with, you know, talk to them, try not to, you know, just see people as labels. I was listening to a, um, a video on Instagram. It was by Tabitha Brown. I'm not sure if many of you have heard of Tabitha Brown. She's an amazing woman. She has um she does a lot of I guess food, like vegan food type of uh, videos and stuff. But she also just like speaks about certain topics and things. And one video that she was speaking about was inmates and just about how they're you know they are humans too and how they are dealing with you know COVID. How they're dealing with you know different situations. How they're dealing with you know being apart from family and you know of course you know she goes into detail about you know how some of them. How some people deserve to be in prison, but you know how we can't label people and and forget the fact that they are human too and that they are dealing with things. So I I, I like the idea behind that, just like how labels can really blind us to really seeing that there's a human in front of us that may be struggling with something. So if you have a human in front of you that's struggling with something, that's dealing with something, if you are that human that's struggling with something or dealing with something, feel okay to know that there's nothing wrong with with feeling that and also don't be afraid to reach out if you need to find that person that you know you can maybe speak to that you can maybe start introducing these conversations to reach out if you have a friend that's struggling you know ask them if they're okay give that lending ear even if you don't have the words to say to ameliorate the situation a lot of times people don't want you to say something to necessarily 
end their suffering or end whatever they're dealing with, but just to listen. You know, sometimes just listening can be something so big. So even if you don't think you have the words to say to help out in the situation, just being there to listen can be something so big. Just saying, I'm here for you can be something so big. I hear you can be something so amazing. So take care of yourself. Take care of your mental mental health. Be there for yourself. Be there for your friends and your family. And yeah, and, and take no shame in, in, in feeling things because we're human and, and that's what we do. So that's that's all I got for this episode. I hope you all got something out of it, maybe. You can send anything you'd like as far as ideas or thoughts or new topics to everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com. You can join the Instagram page at everything.sunpodcast, or you can join the Twitter page at every sun podcast. And the Instagram group is also there. I mean, the Facebook group is also there, and that is Everything Under the Sun with Ty. But yeah, that's all I got. Love you all, and I will see you next time.